Back in 2014, I would not have guessed that Freddie Gibbs and Madlib working together would be a recipe for greatness. Their styles seemed at odds with each other, with Freddie being a gangster rapper from Gary, Indiana, favoring trap sounds, and Madlib, the producer and rapper from Oxnard, California, known for his crate digging and sample-based production. But they came together to release one of the best records of that year, Piñata. The album, especially in the first half, plays out like a 70s gangster movie, with these rugged and violent tales of gang life from Freddie Gibbs over the top of some of Madlib's most creative sampling. In this video, we're going to take a look at how the album holds up 10 years later. But first, let's revisit the story of how Mad Gibbs came together. And that begins in 2004 with an intern at Interscope Records. The story of Mad Gibbs. Ben Lambo Lambert had secured an internship in 2004 working as an assistant to an A&R rep. He was given a task find a rapper. That sounds easy enough. The catch? They can't be from New York, LA, Atlanta, or Chicago. A seemingly impossible task, and for an intern no less. Lambo's search found himself on the obscure corners of the web, and it was a website, southwestconnection.com, where he came across Gibbs's music. Lambo immediately loved Gibbs's sound, and had signed him to Interscope Records, with the plans to release his debut album. Lambo was hoping Gibbs would be enough for a promotion from Assistant, but things didn't work out that way. Gibbs was later dropped as part of a label reshuffle before his album could be released, and Lambo became his manager, determined for the world to hear Gibbs' music, with or without Interscope. Lambo eventually left the label and got a job at the iconic Stones Throw Records. The label and Otis Jackson Jr., called home. Jackson, known to most as Madlib, was busy producing numerous projects for fellow Stones Throw artists, Guilty Simpson and M.E.D., as well as projects under his own label, Madlib Invasion. Lambo was the connection, and he had the vision. His client, Freddie Gibbs, rapping over his Stones Throw colleague, Madlib's production. It takes a technically skilled rapper to find the right flow over a Madlib beat, and there is the added pressure of being compared to one of hip-hop's greatest albums of all time. Mad Villainy by Madlib and MF Doom. But Gibbs was up to the challenge. And so, Rap's unlikely duo began to work together. Pinata was underway. In 2010, Madlib handed Gibbs over 100 beats, and over the next three years, the album was recorded, whilst both Madlib and Gibbs worked on other projects concurrently. Their parts recorded separately, with Freddie recording his vocals over one of the beats and Madlib providing any finishing touches. Whilst Piñata was under production, Madlib was releasing an album a month as part of his Madlib Medicine show, and he even found the time to score the Tribe Called Quest documentary, Beats, Rhymes and Life. Gibbs was labelless at this point, but in 2011, he signed to Jeezy's label Corporate Thugs Entertainment, now known as CTE New World. He released a number of mixtapes, including the highly acclaimed Babyface Killer, but Gibbs left the label after a couple of years without releasing his debut studio album. He described his fallout with the label as a business disagreement on The Breakfast Club, and he would later go on to diss Jeezy on numerous songs, including the track Real on Piñata, but nowadays he has squashed the beef and moved past it. Over the three years of Piñata's construction, Mad Gibbs released three EPs, Thuggin, in 2011, Shame in 2012, and Deeper in 2013. The hype was definitely building with each EP release. Gibbs's gangster raps and technical flows provided a different kind of rapper over Madlib's creative production. On the 18th of March 2014, the wait was finally over. Piñata was released under Madlib's own label, Madlib Invasion. The name Piñata came from one of Gibbs's dreams about a baby he had who was hitting a piñata and cocaine was falling out of it. And if you're at all familiar with Gibbs's social media presence, this dream actually sounds pretty tame for his standards. Now this is one of those albums I remember exactly where I was listening to it for the first time. It was back in December 2014. I was about to go on holiday to Nairobi in Kenya and I was looking for songs to load up onto my iPod Classic. I was going through all the end of year lists, all the blogs, and one album that kept coming up was Piñata. Now I was familiar with Madlib's work, but I hadn't ever heard of Freddie Gibbs. And listening to this album on the flight, I was immediately engrossed in Freddie's delivery, in his performances, and the stories that he was telling. And now 10 years on from its release, it is an album I have gone back to every now and again. But like most albums I love, it's rare that I actually sit down and listen to the album front to back with no distractions. 
So I was really excited to do that for this video. So let's get into my thoughts on the album. So Gibbs describes this as a gangster blaxploitation film on wax, and they definitely got that across. The narrative of the first few tracks flow together really well to introduce the protagonist of this movie that Mad Libs and Gibbs are writing. The album starts off with a sample from an old TV show with the words, only the strong survive. This phrase perfectly describes the kind of mindset Gibbs is in when he raps about his life. A constant theme in many of these tracks is Gibbs declaring how much stronger he is compared to his enemies and how much of a dog eat dog environment he finds himself in. Scarface, the second track, is the introduction to our protagonist and details his gangster life. It's rough and violent, but the sound is undeniably cool. The sirens wail in the introduction and the noise builds and then the beat drops into this fantastically funky groove very reminiscent of a 70s exploitation film. Gibbs said that this was the hardest beat for him to rap over, but you really wouldn't know it from the way he delivers his performance. He flows so effortlessly in between the bass grooves and straight away as the listener, you know that you're in for something special and that Gibbs isn't your ordinary rapper. The next track details a relationship that Gibbs has with a woman and she leaves him for someone more stable and someone not involved in the gang life. We're adding another layer to this character and we're finding out how much the life he leads is costing him. It's another stellar beat with a great soul sample and I would really recommend checking out Bandstand's video detailing all the samples that Madlib used in the production of Pinata. Hearing the original samples and hearing Madlib's beats makes you appreciate just how good he is at chopping up the samples and how wide of a musical pool he takes these samples from. On high, Madlib flips the track I Get High by Free De Pain. And as you probably guessed from the title, Freddie is rapping about getting high. The beat is enough to get a contact high from. It is so smooth, so laid back, and Freddie just gliding effortlessly over the beat. Danny Brown features on this track, which is easily my favorite feature on the album. His high-pitched cartoonish delivery is such a contrast to the way that Freddie raps in that real smooth and deep register. And when Danny Brown comes in, it really adds to the high that this song takes you on. I have a theory that the way that this song ends is just madly messing around with anyone listening to this song high. He slows the sample down to the point where it sounds like the singer's melting and then there's a guy in the background wailing. It's enough to make a sober listener feel uneasy. And I've learned from experience, listening to this song high, this part is quite distressing. So now our protagonist is sufficiently high, he needs to satisfy his munchies. And to do that, he goes to his favorite chicken spot in Gary, Harold's. Now in general, I normally do favor more chill music compared to something more upbeat or harder hitting. But on Piñata, I just can't help but love these smoother soul tracks. I think Freddy just sounds so good over this kind of production. Also because it sounds completely different to the beats he would pick in his previous work. The track Bomb is Mad Lib at his best, sampling this Italian prog rock band. He creates this really chaotic introduction that eventually clears the way for Freddy to come in and deliver some tough bars about gangster life. You can hear Freddy's breath intake and for him to be able to wrap these tracks on one take and perform these tracks live without missing one word, it really just demonstrates what a technically good rapper he is. But it's not just the technique of Freddy that I love, it's the lyrical content as well. This line about the life he is leading is such an apt description of the violent environment he finds himself in. These cold bars continue on the track Shitsville with the bar, Motherfuck euthanasia, I'll lace your food up with razors. Make you gargle with salt water, excuse yourself from my table. This bar sounds like it's describing a scene straight out of a gangster movie and it adds to that cinematic feel that the album has going for it. Thuggin is another banger, and the way that this song starts, with the beat building up in urgency as Gibbs raps, is the thing of beauty. If you listen to the original sample and then to what Madlib does with it on this track, it's nothing sort of genius. It's eerie, it's ethereal, it's kind of uplifting, and that's contrasted with Gibbs sounding maybe the meanest on this track. The way that he delivers dug in intermittently on throughout the track is too cold. It just sounds so good in his deep register. And I think now in the track list is where the cinematic feel runs out of steam, especially on the track Real, where Freddy is describing his rap beef with Jeezy rather than the gang life that he's been describing in the previous tracks. I do love the laid back beat on Robes, which features Domo Genesis and Earl Sweatshirt. The beat feels like hip hop lounge music and Freddie, Domo and Earl all delivering great verses. On the track Broken, we have Gibbs at his most vulnerable and personal. 
and is backed by this real nostalgic sounding production. It feels really melancholic and reflective and the soul sample adds to the emotion that Gibbs is delivering in his lyrics. He emits the more violent bars and instead reflects on his past life, like his grandma finding his stash and his dad being a crooked cop. Scarface is featured on this track, which is a really cool moment for Gibbs with Scarface being one of Gibbs's favorite rappers. And I love this line that Scarface had in his verse. Trigger man rule, that's the art of drug dealing. This bar really summarizes what every gangster rapper talks about and that's how violent the environment is. It's you're either the best gunman or you end up dead. This line loops back to that introduction track, Only the Strong Survive, and just nicely summarizes everything that Freddie is talking about on this album. The track Nyx has a really cool storytelling component, with Freddie prefacing each of the verses with a story about the Knicks getting thrashed, first by Michael Jordan, and secondly by LeBron James. Each verse goes on to describe a friend that Freddie has lost, and by prefacing it with this Knicks defeat, it gives the sense that time is passing, but the same things will keep happening. The Knicks will keep losing and Freddy will keep losing friends. And finally, we have the closing track, Pinata, which runs at a mammoth eight minutes with a host of different rappers, all rapping over one of the harder beats that Madlib has produced for this album. This is probably the only track I'm not keen on, mainly because eight minutes of the same loop can get very repetitive and not all of these verses are interesting enough to hold my attention. It does contain one of the harder bars from Gibbs that I wanna highlight, revive my enemy with gun to mouth resuscitation. But apart from that, I don't really have any other notes on this one. So it's unfortunate that the album ends on a bit of a weak point, but the other tracks more than make up for it. Now this isn't something that I would normally point out on an album, but the deluxe version of Pinata is well worth checking out because it contains all the tracks that were released as part of those three EPs that didn't make it onto the album. The track Deep is one of my favorite from Mad Gibbs and is Freddy flowing at his absolute best. I can't believe it didn't make the final cut of Pinata, but I'm just happy that we got it on streaming services now as part of the deluxe version. The Alex Goose remixes are also well worth listening to. They provide such a different dynamic to each of the tracks that he chooses to remix and features some really creative production. Piñata is undeniably a classic hip hop album and will go down as one of the best albums the genre has ever produced. Personally, I really love sample based production and I really love great flows, technical rapping. So this album is just right up my street. I think the comparisons to Mad Villainy are fair. They both feature some of Mad Lib's best production and both feature some of the best MCs hip hop has to offer. But I think where Gibbs can set himself apart is the vulnerability in his storytelling. Of course, there's exaggeration and just outright fiction in these bars, but Gibbs's performance is so raw and it's so emotional. I just can't help but feel every word he raps. Doom is the master of surprise. He takes you down one lyrical road before yanking the wheel left and taking you down a completely different route. And Gibbs's strengths lie in his flows, which can take you by surprise with just how good they are, how we can rap every line and every word in just one breath. Pinata was my first introduction to Freddie Gibbs and turned me into a fan right away. Born out of Lambo being in the right place at the right time, Pinata is a great example of two different artists coming together, pushing each other creatively and bringing out a different side in each other's work. Guys, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it if you've made it this far and listened to everything I've had to say. Uh, let me know in the comments if there's anything you wanna see me cover, if there's anything I can improve in my videos, things that you like, things that you don't like. I am really trying to learn how to tell stories better and how to present them better. So I'd really appreciate any criticism, any advice that you guys have for me. I hope wherever this video finds you, you are doing well and I really appreciate your time. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.